Uh, I'm Major General Munir Zaman Ratan from Bangladesh. I'm the President of the Bangladesh Institute of Peace and Security Studies. I'm also the Chairman of the Global Military Advisory Council on Climate Change. The thing that I want to talk today is about water security in South Asia. South Asia is home to one third of the global humanity with a very large demographic size in countries like Bangladesh, India, Pakistan and other, other South Asian countries. But it is also a region that is most water stressed today. A large number of people in South Asia don't have access to sufficient water or clean and safe drinking water. There is a lack of water for agricultural productivity. There is a lack of water for the livelihood on, based on river fishery and others. In general, South Asia is becoming one of the most water stressed areas of the world. And as we move up in the years, as there are more impacts of climate change coming to the region, water is going to become a more scarce resource than any other regions of the world. Some of the key highlights of the problem that I foresee now, the first one is about sharing of the transboundary water. South Asia is home to some of the great rivers of the world, like the Ganges, the Brahmaputra, the Indus, and many others. But unfortunately, the river basin, the Himalayan river basin, on which most of these rivers flow, don't have any river basin ma management mechanisms in place. We only have one Indus Basin Treaty between India and Pakistan, but that treaty is under increasing stress now because Pakistan complains about India's unilateral withdrawal of water in the upper Ripari and Kashmir area. And that is now becoming a great concern to most countries in the region because India and Pakistan have had history of conflict. There are also countries which have nuclear capability and any tension that comes out of water between these two countries have a tremendous potential for conflict escalation up to any level. Therefore, the issues of water sharing between India and Pakistan is coming under tremendous stress and tension and is a matter of, of great concern not only to South Asian security watchers but also to others around the world. We have similar issues of water sharing between India and Bangladesh. My own country, Bangladesh, shares 54 rivers with India on transboundary basis. But we only have one single treaty, which is the Ganges Treaty. On 54, 53 other rivers, Bangladesh and India have no mechanisms to find out how the transboundary water will be shared. There is also reasons to worry about because the transboundary water sharing is now impacting on Bangladesh, which is the downmost downstream country, in a manner that Many of his farmers are not getting sufficient water to cultivate the agricultural land. The river flows are changing. The livelihood of many river fishermen are also being affected by this. There is a process of desertification in some of the areas because not sufficient water is flowing down the river into Bangladesh. Another key area of concern is between China and India. China is the water tower of South Asia. The Brahmaputra River starts from the Tibet area, flows down to India and to Bangladesh and other countries in the region. But off late, India has been complaining that China is about to divert water from the Tibet area to other water scarce regions of China. And if that happens, then there'll be less and less water that will flow into Brahmaputra River and going down to India and Bangladesh. And if that happens, I will again foresee that there is a rising tension between these two great powers who are again have a history of conflict, which countries also have nuclear capability, and if there is any water tension or even a localized conflict between these two countries, it has tremendous water war potential, also escalation to any levels of conflict. The third one that I want to point out is that the Himalayan glaciers, which are the source of much of the water that flows down our rivers, are melting at a very rapid pace. The IPCC's scientific analysis has indicated to us the Himalayan glaciers are melting at a rate that in a few decades, the glaciers may be completely gone. We are seeing the retreat of the ice tongues in that area. So as the Himalayan glaciers melt more rapidly, we are going to see more flooding downstream and 
where the tongues are gone and the rice caps are gone in the Himalayan area, then we're going to go into a period of severe water stress and drought conditions. The other factor that I want to point out here is that South Asia doesn't have much information and scientific data on groundwater. And as we come under stress of the river flows, many countries are also withdrawing groundwater at a pace which is not scientifically sustainable. Therefore, the unilateral withdrawal of groundwater beyond proportions is also causing areas where there is poisoning in the ground aquifers, resulting in arsenic poisoning in large parts of Bangladesh and many other parts of South Asia. So the issue of groundwater needs to be addressed urgently in South Asia because if we want to have a balance of withdrawal of groundwater which is not harmful to the aquifers. South Asia does not have any water cooperation among countries. We don't share hydrographic data amongst countries. We don't have a mechanisms by which water statistics of data and warnings can be shared among countries in the river basin. Therefore, we need a regime by under which we can have the scientific data of water, the hydrographic data that has to be shared amongst the countries of the region so that we can each benefit from the scientific statistics of the data that is available to countries and the region. We very urgently need a basin management mechanism in the Himalayan Basin area so that we can equitably share the waters that is available to us on the transboundary river. We also need to integrate China, who also, also shares the source of some of our great rivers, so that China is also integrated into the system of this transboundary water sharing regime. In the end, what I would like to say that South Asia has tremendous problems of water and water stress, which are being aggravated by climate change induced conditions and also conditions of man-made conditions of not having any cooperation mechanism amongst themselves. We need to move very quickly before many of these stresses go up to the point where it can ignite or induce conflict in the region. I hope we can all avoid that and have a regime in South Asia where water, which is the best resource to humanity, can be there for all of us to share. Thank you.